Tail Sonnen made a video where he claimed that judo was the least and worst represented martial art in all of MMA. And being a fan of judo, you might think I disagree with him. But the truth is, I actually think he has a point. For those of you who don't know, Chael Sonnen is a retired MMA fighter and current fight commentator. In other words, he's someone who knows what he's talking about. But the thing you have to understand is, Chael Sonnen is an instigator and he's a troll. He says things that he knows aren't entirely true, or he spins things to look a certain way to make his point, all in the name of A, getting under your skin and getting you emotionally riled up and therefore excited about what he's talking about, and B, more clearly illustrating his point. So when he says something like, judo is the worst represented sport in all the mixed martial arts, there's some nuance to that point. His reasoning is that there's never been a pure judo champion in any major mixed martial arts promotion. Now, of course, that's ignoring the major elephant in the room of Ronda Rousey, who was in fact an Olympic level judoka and also the women's bantamweight champion. But outside of Ronda, I can kind of see where he's coming from. Because yeah, there hasn't been a pure judo black belt champ in any mixed martial arts league. But for the last 20, 30 years, there hasn't been a pure jujitsu champ. There hasn't been a pure boxing champ. There hasn't been a pure Muay Thai champ. The fact of the matter is, MMA is its own sport. You have to be able to strike, clinch, and grapple. As I've said in a previous video, those are the only three elements that make up combat, and that is the three elements that make up mixed martial arts. But that out of the way, judo takes up an important portion of clinch wrestling and ground grappling. So it stands to reason then that if you compete in a sport that allows you to clinch wrestle and grapple on the ground, that judo would serve you very well. So why doesn't it? The things that make judo super dangerous and super effective for self-defense are also the things that make it kind of difficult to use in MMA. First, the gi. Look guys, I love training in a gi. I love the look of it, I love the feel of it, I love the sound that you make when you start throwing strikes in it, but in an MMA fight, you are as close to naked as you can possibly get without getting an X rating. The gi is to judo what the boxing glove is to boxing. There's so much potential to throw your opponent from any which way, not to mention choke them from any which way, just because they have some collars and sleeves that you can grab onto. But obviously, that same advantage doesn't exist when you're not wearing a gi. Now, yes, you can modify a lot of judo techniques to be done in a no gi situation, and we'll talk about what that means later on. But by and large, there's a good portion of judo techniques that just simply don't transfer to the no gi world. And if you're training, let's say 50 techniques, but you can only use three of them in this new sports arena, that's a giant portion of your techniques taken away. The second point against judo and MMA is its own rule set as a sport. Now look guys, I am very good at hip throws. I can find hip tosses, ogoshis, harai goshis, pretty much at any angle. It's something that comes very naturally to me. But at the same time, I can recognize that as easy as it is for me, it is still more difficult than just taking someone down at the legs. The two leg tackle or the double leg takedown if you prefer, is something that's very natural and instinctive to human beings because it's the most easy way to take someone down. Fact of the matter is, in sport judo, you're not allowed to attack the legs. The Judo Olympic Committee wants to make sure the sport of judo visibly looks different enough from the sport of freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling because those takedowns are so much easier than throws over the shoulder or the hip. And that's without getting into the restrictive nature of the joint locking game in sport judo. In sport judo, you can only attack the elbow. You can't attack the shoulder, can't attack the wrist, can't attack the neck, obviously can't attack the knees. You're only allowed to joint lock the elbow. Now, transferring that to MMA, if you're not allowed to go for the simplest, most effective takedowns, again, leg takedowns, and you can only train to attack someone in the elbow, that's a very restrictive way of training. That doesn't mean judo isn't effective for fighting, but under the rule set of mixed martial arts, where you're not gonna have any clothes on and your opponent can attack any joint they want, judo is gonna be too restrictive. But both of those things are easily fixable by A, just not training in a gi, and B, opening up the rule set. The problem with that is, when you do that, all of a sudden judo looks a lot more like freestyle and catch wrestling, not to mention no gi Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And if you're concerned with maintaining the purity of judo, you don't want it to look like another style. You need it to look like judo. But now we get to have a philosophical discussion about what makes up a style. Is it the techniques and curriculum of that style, 
or is it the method and training of that style? For me, styles are made up by how they train, not necessarily what they train. As long as the core element of the training is there, the way a thing is trained, then you can modify the techniques, what is trained, as much as you want. But there was a second element to Chael's video that got under my skin, where he said that Sambo players and wrestlers often easily transfer over to Judo and win Judo championships. Whereas the same isn't necessarily true going the other way. Now look, I don't have the statistic for this. I don't know how many Judoka can transfer over to wrestling and to Sambo and win. And I don't know how many do the other way. But what I can say is, more so than in striking, I see grapplers treating every grappling style as the same style. Everything I just said kind of already exists in the grappling world. Most Samboists, Samboistas, whatever, most Sambo practitioners understand A, that their style came from Judo, so therefore it's gotta be somewhat effective, and B, understand that grappling is its own thing. What's different is the rule set. The rule set of Sambo is different from the rule set of Judo, but if you have a good grasp of stand-up wrestling and grappling, then you can do well in either or. Now, this opens us up to a discussion of whose training method is better, the more hardcore method of Sambo or the slightly more defensive method of Judo, but that's really more up to taste and again, what sport you wanna compete in. The fact is I noticed that in general, grapplers have an easier time transferring from sport to sport to sport in the realm of grappling than strikers do in the realm of striking. Meaning it's much easier for a Samboista to go over to Judo than it is for let's say a kickboxer to go over to boxing. Not saying it doesn't happen, punch boys. I'm just saying I haven't seen it as much. What's very interesting to me is we can have an amazing, beautiful throw happen in MMA and just as many judoka and just as many wrestlers will come out and say, that's from my style. And the fact is they'll both be right because a throw is a throw. A takedown is a takedown. Like I've said before, there's only a handful of right ways to do things and a whole bunch of wrong ways to do things. And when you zero in on the most effective way to do something, it's gonna look the same from style to style. So yes, when something awesome happens in a fight and you see judo players, wrestlers, sambuistas, whatever, arguing about what technique that actually was, obviously it's gonna come down to the background of that specific fighter. But at the end of the day, they're all gonna be right because a throw is a throw, a takedown is a takedown. The problem with filming in a martial arts gym is sometimes you have to leave because classes are starting. Let's say we don't think judo is just a training method. Let's say we want judo to be fully expressed in competition outside of judo itself. I don't think mixed martial arts is the best avenue for that. But by the same token, I also don't think mixed martial arts is the best avenue for something like HEMA. For those of you that don't know, HEMA is historical European martial arts, primarily focusing on the training of weapons. If you're trying to show off HEMA in a weapons-based competition, Mixed martial arts, obviously, will not be the realm for that. Same token, if we're going to argue that judo is done in a gi and focuses on upper body throws and has to do that, then again, mixed martial arts will not be the avenue for that. But if we want to see judo in more of an MMA context, then we have to understand and accept that judo in a no gi format will just end up looking more like wrestling and jujitsu. And there's nothing wrong with that. Again, grappling is grappling. It doesn't matter what you call it or what your belt is and what style. If you view martial arts into just three separate elements, striking, clinching, and grappling, then you're going to realize that styles are just names of training methods. And the training method you resonate with might be great, but there might be some room to improve or modify based on what you want it to do. So I see where Chael Sonnen is coming from. I understand that there isn't a giant representation of judo in mixed martial arts insofar as there aren't any outspoken judo competitors. But I think we see judo in almost every single fight in the UFC, in one, in Bellator, whatever. The minute people tie up and someone starts trying to take someone down via hip throw, shoulder throw, outside sweep, inside reap, whatever, the minute that happens, it's judo. And it's also wrestling. And it's also shui jiao, and it's also catch, and it's also jujitsu, and it's also aiki, and it's all Bottom line is, guys, I still think Judo is one of the best, if not the best martial arts to practice for personal protection. And I think it's up there in one of the best things you can do as a base for mixed martial arts. However, I recognize that if we're talking about mixed martial arts, Judo needs to be modified a lot. And you might be better served just looking at no gi jiu jitsu or wrestling. But if you've already trained Judo, if you love it and you wanna use it in the cage, by all means, make those modifications and enjoy. All that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. If you did, Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. 
And if you wouldn't mind doing me a favor, go ahead and open up the description box down there at the bottom. There you'll find a whole bunch of links and codes to get you some of the best training gear on the planet, courtesy of Combat Corner, as well as how to get yourself official Combat Self-Defense merch. As always, you guys, this has been Rob from Combat Self-Defense. I want to thank you for all the hard work. Thank you for the hard work yet to be done. And I'll see you next time. Slip!